It's expected to be one of the biggest cosmic events we have seen in decades, the so-called Comet of the Century. Photographed by the Hubble Telescope, scientists say the head of that comet, about 3,000 miles wide, the tail more than 57,000 miles long, the center area called the nucleus is three to four miles across. That's big. Uh, it was discovered by a Russian amateur astronomer last September. They've been watching it ever since. And Tariq Malik is the managing editor of Space.com. Back with us in studio. And good morning to you. Morning, uh, where is she going? Well, uh, it's basically out kind of beyond Jupiter right now. It's coming in uh, to the inner solar system. It's going to swing around the sun. It's going to flare up, hopefully be one of the brightest things we've seen in the night sky. So in years. it's not coming near the planet Earth. It will, it will be nearest Earth after it swings past the sun in December, still millions of miles away, no threat to oh, our Oh, I got you. Okay, so that, that, that's taken care of. Yeah. I'm reading through your, your comments here, Tariq. You say most promising, um, unpredictable, but promising yet again. Yes. In what sense is it promising? Well, this, is, uh, this promises to be the brightest comet we've seen uh, in the night sky in years, if, you know, possibly even decades. You know, that's why NASA, other scientists, are calling it the comet of the century. They don't know if it will perform. They don't want to basically say it's going to happen and then something happens with the comet on the way in. It breaks apart. It fizzles out. It burns up by the sun. That could happen. Mm -hmm. uh, so if it survives that pass through the sun uh, in November, then on Thanksgiving night, we could see something really... So we, really we have some time to watch this thing still. Exactly. Yeah, it's still very far away. It'll get brighter in the night sky. Soon it'll be uh, the summer, maybe visible to the naked eye. Really? Yeah. Okay, so we don't need a telescope? Uh, you we don't need Hubble? We can go in our backyards and watch this? That's the best thing about this. You know, starting in September, or leading all the way up to Christmas, uh, it'll, it should be a, an amazing night sky sight. It could, it, its tail, long now, could stretch across the night sky mm. if it, if it what, really what would up. we see if it behaves and acts the way you expect it to? Well, if it flares up, you know, it would start out as a bright kind of fuzzy speck in, in the night sky. As it gets closer and closer to the sun in November, it would just get bigger. The tail would sweep out. Uh, you know, possibly covering much of the sky. Uh, it could be brighter than the full moon uh, at night, uh, and, uh, and it just could be just an awesome It'd experience. It'd be really cool to watch then. I mean, this it, could be quite spectacular. This, this to me, is probably the sky-watching event of, of the year. Well, let's hope it lives up to its title, the Comet of the Century, yes. and happy anniversary to Hubble. That's right. 23 years old today. That's right. Thank you, Tariq. Tariq Malik, thank, thank you very much. Thanks. Right. Martha Wisnick. Anticipation is building as Comet Isime plunges into the inner solar system for a close encounter with the Sun in November 2013. Blasted at point-blank range by solar radiation, the Sun Grazer will likely become one of the finest comets in many years. When NASA's SWIFT spacecraft observed the comet in January 2013, it was still near the orbit of Jupiter, but already very active. More than 112,000 pounds of dust were spewing from the comet's nucleus every minute. It turns out some of that dust might end up on Earth. Veteran meteor researcher Paul Weigert of the University of Western Ontario has been using a computer to model the trajectory of dust ejected by Comet Ison, and his findings suggest that an unusual meteor shower could be in the offing. For several days around January 12, 2014, Earth will pass through a stream of fine-grained debris from Comet Ison, says Weigert. The resulting shower could have some interesting properties. For one thing, it could dust the surface of the Earth. According to Weigert's computer models, the debris stream is populated with extremely tiny grains of dust, no more than a few microns wide. They will be hitting at a speed of 56 kilometers a second. Because the particles are so small, they will be rapidly slow to a stop in Earth's upper atmosphere. Instead of burning up in a flash of light, they will drift gently down to the Earth below, he says. Don't expect to notice, though. The invisible rain of comet dust, if it occurs, would be very slow. It can take months or even years for fine dust to settle out of the high atmosphere. Another unusual manifestation of the shower could be noctilucent clouds. Noctilucent clouds are electric blue clouds that float high above Earth's poles. Recent data from NASA's Ames spacecraft suggests that they are seeded by space dust. Tiny meteoroids act as nucleating points where water molecules gather. The resulting ice crystals assemble into clouds at the edge of space itself. This is still speculative, 
but common ison could provide the seeds for a noctilucent display. Electric blue ripples over Earth's polar regions might be the only visible sign that a shower is taking place. Weigert notes yet another curiosity. The shower is going to hit our planet from two directions at once. When Earth passes through the debris stream, we will encounter two populations of comet dust. One swarm of dust will be following comet Ison into the sun. Another swarm will be moving in the opposite direction, pushed away from the sun by solar radiation pressure. The streams will pepper opposite sides of Earth simultaneously. In my experience, this kind of double whammy is unprecedented, says Weigert. Bill Cook of NASA's Meteoroid Environment Office says there's little danger to Earth-orbiting spacecraft. These particles are just too small to penetrate the walls of our satellites, and they don't stand a chance against the heavy shielding of the ISS. However, he adds, mission operators undoubtedly will be alert around January 12th for possible anomalies. Skywatchers should probably be alert, too. The odds of seeing anything are low, but common ISON could prove full of surprises.